Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is week two of the 2015 season and I am your host for the match, your caster, Crick Chronic War Catalyst. And uh, I do want to start this off with a quick note here. Uh, currently Maokai is disabled because there is a bug so Maokai will not be available. Uh, in the previous game I uh, had uploaded, I did not note that, so I do just want to note that for everybody. Um, also, though perhaps less relevant, uh, <laughs> the ZZ Rock Portal item has also been disabled because of a bug. Uh, I'm not sure how much we would have seen that in this game, uh, but that is actually a cool item, and for those of you who are nerds about this game like me, you should check that out because I think that's a really cool item. Um, so, into the game here, we do have, on the blue side, Garmin Vivo uh, is the team. Uh, Garmin is a... Uh, navigation equipment company so if you uh, use a GPS they probably had a hand in making that GPS that you use so for all you GPS users out there root for that blue side they are playing for the charity United Way uh, United Way uh, works inside uh, local communities to try and help improve some of like the underlying causes um, of uh, problems that are ha happening in that community so they end up focusing mainly on uh, health and education and uh, providing financial stability to people in that community to try and elevate everyone in that community together so a great charity there and on the red side we have a team I'm very excited to cast for a team Amazon Penta Hugs oh I'm so excited to actually be able to cast for that team because you know how I love the names that are funny and clever um, so I'm all about that <laughs> Look out for a little bias towards the red side from me this game. Um, Amazon, of course, uh, company uh, that allows you to buy things through the internet. This mic that I'm using right now I actually bought off of Amazon, so a uh, big fan of them for sure. Um, they are playing for the charity Child's Play. Child's Play, um, one of the more common charities uh, in the matchup, I'm sure. Some games later today will also have Child's Play, at least one will, um, as the charity Child's Play. For those of you who don't know, um, is a charity that brings children in hospitals uh, and domestic violence shelters um, some of their childhood back uh, by uh, enabling them to have some of the joys of gaming that we all enjoy um, and actually help them get back to living their life and being a kid again. So great charity there, definitely uh, helps a lot of people out. Very good social charity there. So, But without further ado, let's get into the picks and ban phase. Um, we do see uh, some pretty uh, solid bands coming out. The Master Yi band uh, and the Grave bands for the blue side. A little uncommon. Graves is pretty strong right now, though. I personally have been seeing Graves more and more frequently, um, including at the pro level lately, because um, that ultimate uh, combo burst damage <laughs> is just so strong right now. Um, definitely a very solid band there. Um, and the Master Yi could be more of uh, someone they just don't want to have <laughs> against them on this team. Of course, if Master Yi queues in um, and with that ultimate pop for the speed boost and uh, the invulnerability to any CC that might come his way, um, he would definitely be able to get on uh, the squishier targets of the Ziggs, of the Nami, of the Vayne. Um, and that's something they definitely don't want to see, especially since Vlad um, doesn't have uh, very much CC himself um, as a top lane pick for them. Uh, you know, they're not going to have uh, very much CC to deal with a Master Yi if he ran in. I mean, what's Vlad going to do? Pull out of the way? <laughs> There's not not too good of a CC there once Master Yi pops his ultimate. So a good band there, probably with uh, this team composition in mind, because they do have a lot of squishy people on this team, and they're going to look for a more sustained fight um, with that Nami and with that pick potential um, from the Ziggs and from the Trundle Slow uh, when he pulls up. That accursed spike out of the ground that always gets me killed. <laughs> um, looking over to the red side here, uh, for their team fights, they're going to have, of course, the Gnar Nightmare in the top lane um, to start off those team fights. If Gnar can actually get in uh, with that uh, bounce that we all hate to see <laughs> when he uh, is transforming and ult everyone towards his team, uh, that could actually set up an amazing wombo combo here. Because um, I would push everyone in uh, more, not just a uh, closed area, but also more of a straight line, uh, depending on how they line up before Nar uh, ults them. Uh, but if he does, uh, that CC can be chained with uh, Wu Kong's 
uh, ultimate uh, knockup. So Ari could then spirit rush into a good position to just lay down uh, her damage on the entire team to get a whole bunch of true damage on the return of her Q. Uh, so that would be definitely an absolute nightmare if that happened to the blue team. Also, uh, Braum would be able to straight line ultimate and hit everyone as well. So that, if you see that happen, that is not going to be a team fight that goes well for the blue side. So... Um, they're definitely going to be looking on the blue side for a lot more pick potential. Um, with that Zig Satchel charge, uh, we don't see that used um, super frequently, but it does actually have quite a, a lot of ability for pick potential, especially if it's follow-up CC. So if Nami can land a very critical bubble on somebody who's out of position, Ziggs can throw down that Satchel and immediately Satchel them once they get out of the bubble to really punish that um, mispositioning there. So, um, And of course with the Trundle... Uh, uh, pull to sort of make the response to that catch or uh, that pick potential they have a lot slower. Um, that's definitely going to be the way they're looking for um, on this blue team. But also, uh, they do not give up the ability to team fight here. Of course, uh, Vlad has a lot of um, AoE spells, um, so he's going to be able to lay down quite a bit of uh, AP damage in vain with the ability to just. Um, sit back and wail away with those auto attacks and proc that true damage. Uh, that's definitely going to be something pretty scary coming out <laughs> if she can actually uh, manage to set that up properly. So definitely uh, not going to be something um, like uh, only a team fight oriented team here uh, from the blue side. Um, or excuse me, only a pick oriented team. Uh, they still have a lot of team fight potential here. Um, so we're, we're going to see a pretty strong team all around. Um, Zig's probably going to um, be the most critical part of whether or not he can land those ultimates well. Um, Zig's ultimate, of course, is really strongly telegraphed despite having a global presence um, if he can use that early during the laning phase to create a lot of pressure in other lanes um, while he's roaming or uh, just secure a lot of kills with that uh, global ability. Um, you know, he... Uh, whether or not that occurs during the team fights in the later stages of the game, um, especially around uh, the uh, dragon in the early part of the game where everybody um, tries to rush that first dragon a little bit early so people go a little bit lower than they should. If he can land some critical ultimates onto people, um, I think that could have the largest swing potential out of really anyone right now uh, in this game. But of course, red side, uh, certainly not without uh, their pick potential as well. That Ari stun, or excuse me, that Ari charm uh, lasts for so long and is just such a great tool to misposition people. Um, and if done uh, very carefully, uh, Caitlyn can even throw a trap behind them to sort of, um, if not trap them if they run right back into it as it uh, triggers, um, it will make them take an extra second to run around that trap. And that could give... Uh, a lot of key time for Braum to land his Q to start uh, the charges um, to get that passive stun procced. Um, and with Caitlyn's range, uh, anybody who's hit up by that passive on Braum is probably going to have that procced. Um, he, not just with the Caitlyn too, but also with the Nar. Nar is going to be able to proc those um, uh, Braum passives really strongly. So we are starting out with the good old visual bug here as we enter apparently... 20 minutes into the game. There we go. Um, so we are going to be spawning onto the rift here. Let's get everybody positioned all nice and beautifully here so we can see everything clearly. Um, and that will not be a Vlad jungle. Let's put them in the top lane. All right. So um, as far as just general jungle strategy goes, of course, uh, Wukong looking to gank as much as possible early as we see a possible invade coming in here from the red side. Um, but Trundle probably going to be farming up a bit more. Um, he certainly does have gank potential uh, uh, pretty strongly with that pillar of ice that he can summon. Uh, but definitely something that uh, somebody that will do better in the later stages of the game. But Trundle going to get there just in time to spot them out and get away. Not going to be able to be hit up by that uh, Braum. So it's looking like he's going to get away pretty free, scot free here. Um, and they are taking some actually pretty strong positions here. Now I'm going to throw down the ward there. Um, but they're pretty boldly staying in this part of the jungle um, to make sure that they can 
uh, keep vision on this red team to know what the deal is, but that's a dangerous game they're playing. If the red team was still lurking around, they might uh, be able to get punished, especially uh, if they were right here and tried some blind CC into this bush. Um, that might not uh, work out very well for them, but the uh, despite the blue side's knowledge, they are uh, the red side is just falling back to the line of scrimmage, throwing down a ward here in the river, uh, going up top to try and see if they can catch uh, that Vlad out, punish him, but uh, Vlad just hanging out on uh, his side of the jungle, watching the entrance to the blue buff area. Um, they do not know the, whether or not the red team might have slipped in through here, but they will be starting um, on the bottom side of the jungle, will this trundle. So not really going to matter, though. Um, possibly a missed uh, steal uh, for this red side, but... Um, would have been a very uh, gutsy play to do that. So uh, they actually are going to start off leashing the blue buff uh, for this Wukong here. So an unusual start, the smite going down for that blue buff. Uh, we did just see a game in the last game where I believe it was the Jarvan um, who also started uh, with the blue buff and a uh, fairly solid uh, leash. So maybe uh, this might be a sign of a new trend with some teams uh, going back to starting with the buffs. Um, and just giving a bit harder of a leash uh, to get that jungler going and get them a little bit um, ahead of the game. They're farming out that jungle uh, if they start on the blue side. It looks like uh, Trundle actually uh, opting not to go to his red. I'm going to go straight over to the Razor Beaks here um, and farm out those Razor Beaks instead. And will he? He did throw down a trinket that uh, expired here. So it looks like he was possibly waiting for an invade. Actually, a pretty good play there. Um, Throwing down that trinket, knowing that red side was around here, so they probably had a lot of trinkets thrown down. He didn't want to let them know uh, what the deal was. Nami actually missing the bubble there, unfortunate for her, but she's not going to have that stun procced, um, so she will be able to make it out of there alive um, and hit level two and be just fine. Um, but yeah, Trundle going to uh, get the red now. It looks like he's going to be just fine with that. Um, Wukong um, also looking to be quite all right. He looks to have actually started the blue buff so he can get an early gank here and with that charm going down point blank range great charm there and with the flash from uh, the Wukong to secure it that will be the first blood going over to this red side team and unfortunately for the Ziggs he did blow both his uh, barrier and his flash summoner spells so that will be a very vulnerable mid lane um, to some future ganks going down and with a really strong ganker like Wukong you can sure bet that you'll be seeing him in that mid lane again. Um, Wukong as he's gonna uh, smite or no smite was down um, so he will be going back spend some of that money pick up uh, his first jungle item here and we will see him getting uh, that trailblazer actually so he's gonna be looking to be a little bit more farm oriented despite that first blood um, Vayne actually got to be careful with the stun procced on her. Um, gonna be taking a little bit of damage here, but she's far enough under turret where she's alright. Um, uh, but Wukong still looking to just, uh, press that advantage, um, with some early boots to give him some more mobility. Um, gonna stick with the comfort item, uh, of the Ranger's Trailblazer to farm out those jungle camps a little bit quicker. Um, but have the early boots so he can actually gank a little bit harder here. Whereas Trundle is opting to go with Stalker's Blade. So Trundle going to be looking to uh, make use of that as much as possible here uh, in the lanes with a lot of ganks. Um, Caitlyn putting down quite a bit of auto harass during that exchange there onto both the Nami and Vayne. So, I mean, thank goodness for them, that is a Nami. So the Nami sustain is going to probably be enough to get them through that. But they do have to be careful uh, in these exchanges with Wukong coming back here mid lane just to get a little bit of damage in on the Ziggs who he knows uh, does not have those summoner spells so he's gonna try to punish that as much as possible as we see Trundle coming in beautiful pillar there actually getting them quite out of position just by being an object in the way and with that smite coming down to slow him down that will be the bubble onto uh, the Braum as well Braum definitely a tanky target not gonna be the one they were looking for and actually Trundle gonna be taken quite low from that turret shot but they will be shoving them out of this lane here. No, Braum actually just going to munch through those biscuits. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of HP uh, spent in this bottom lane on that gank. Um, so possibly a repeat gank after Trunnel gets those Krugs to actually formally force them out of lane. But we do see uh, they immediately come back, does the red side in this bottom lane here. 
uh, and just reestablishes that dominance. Vayne actually completely zoned away, not even to get the XP here. Uh, having to throw that out just to get Braum off of her to make sure there's no follow-up here. And Trundle actually going to go back, so it uh, looks like they're going to try and push that wave into the turret to press that lead and deny as much um, last hitting as possible here, while Vayne still only has the Doran's Blade at this point. Uh, but with the Nami uh, E uh, to empower her auto attacks, that might change. But Nami actually, or excuse me, uh, Ari going to uh, ult in there. Not going to be enough, Zig's just going to back away here, actually going to hang out, try and get some of the CS if he can, and it looks like he will be able to, uh, now that the Spirit Rush is on cooldown, uh, even though she only used one charge, but uh, Zig's taken quite low, and that was the time to do it before his barrier had come up, it is back up now, um, but that was almost another kill onto the Sari, so Ziggs has to start respecting that Ari a little bit more. Uh, even though she hadn't gone back yet, she was still operating only off that Dorton's ring, and she actually still is. Uh, when she goes back to buy, she's going to have quite a lot of gold to cash, and it's probably going to get a good item right off the bat. Vlad, going to throw down the ultimate uh, more for a little bit of harass, but meanwhile, on the bottom lane here, we do see Vayne uh, going to be able to not have a proc on her. No, she does have a proc on her, and that will be... A beautiful juggle of the aggro there um, while we see some action in the top lane here. Oh, Wukong stuck there. A good turret or a good pillar there to make him take quite a bit of turret damage. And he will be not able to because of the uh, Caitlyn trap. No, there's the bite. He will be getting in this. Wukong actually very low. Gonna need to run away here. And he will be able to. Um, that pillar not gonna be able to get him. But great, beautiful pillar there. Um, by the uh, Trundle to actually trap Wukong under the turret down there and make him take those two turret shots so he could not stay around and fight afterwards. As we see Nar starting to charge up, getting ready to transform here. Vlad's going to want to be careful here. But actually taking quite a bit of damage, so Nar not going to be able to do much uh, harassment during that phase as uh, Vlad, uh, with the uh, Dorn Shield start, uh, is going to heal up quite a bit um, from any auto attacks that Nar tries to throw down on him. So, um, actually going to be quite a good lane. Uh, it appears to be working out for that Vlad, even though the CSs uh, are very uh, near identical at this point in that top lane. Uh, he does have quite a strong advantage as far as the hit points go. So, going to see uh, how well he can continue to sustain here with those abilities. Uh, but Caitlyn actually pushed on her turret, so that will be some damage on... Uh, to the turret, but um, not going to go for the, any uh, real fight here under the turret. Why is it so with Nami? Not even having any mana if they wanted to. So all in all, uh, despite that turret diving action in the bottom lane, uh, fairly quiet uh, start to this mid game here, uh, which will uh, be not necessarily to the disadvantage of either team here. Both teams do have, oh, unfortunately the Condemn going to be used on a minion instead um, and that pool going to be able to fool oh flash immediately outside of the pool so Wukong's ultimate does not hit him great play by the Vladimir there and that will be a flash for flash because Wukong did flash in to try and start that off and Caitlyn going to be looking possibly to get that ultimate onto the vein if she comes back the Q just out of range so with that heal pot running, she's probably not going to be able to get it if she just ultimate the vein. But the Nami heals too, just keeping that vein just barely out of range for the Caitlyn ultimate. If she could just land a little bit more harass, Nami is out of mana at this point. Uh, so they are going to be fairly low and vulnerable. But we see Wukong coming in here again to this mid lane. Oh, the flash being used there. Uh, good play uh, by the Ziggs to not risk that charm. If he had been charmed there, that definitely would have been the end of Ziggs. Um, so very good, uh, very safe play there to immediate flash away uh, from the Ziggs. Going to deny that kill in the mid lane. Um, and that will be uh, a very vulnerable, again though, mid lane uh, to a repeat gank, which we see coming in here. Um, and Ziggs does not have vision of this. So Ziggs really needs to start getting some vision here. He has neither Bush warded at this point. So especially now that they know that those summoners are down, <laughs> Good uh, roll in by the vein there to try and save Nami, but actually going to be taking quite low as the vein. Oh my god, the vein! Going to be Nami sacrificing her life. Good guy, Nami, saving the 20 hit point vein. Wow, hero Nami there. 
Uh, but meanwhile, the top lane, we do have Vlad going quite low, taking that turret shot. Uh, but Nara, respecting uh, the ramping up ability of that ultimate, is going to back away there. And we see uh, Trundle trying to clear his pink lord actually is going to be caught out, even though the charm did miss. That will be enough damage. Yes, going to be going over to the Wukong, actually. Uh, is that kill, and that ultimate from Ziggs not going to be doing too much damage, unfortunately, uh, as he only has a Chalice Ring completed at this point. Uh, I'm not going to be able to contest this dragon at all, so that will be the dragon going over to the red side. Trundle trying to do what he could to establish some vision in that uh, dragon area. Going to pay for it with his life and end up giving the dragon uh, to the red side regardless. As Vlad looks to try and go down here, that's some really strong burst. Nara actually going to flash away to try and just stay out of range and jump. Great jump there by the Nara. Nara will get away. Nara actually does get away. Vlad not quite able to get that uh, last attack in to suck out the last little bit of life from that Nara and get the kill. Wow, really great play. I was actually questioning that flash into the bush, thinking it might have been better to try and juke a flash back under the turret. But Nara is showing some great mechanics to jump just at the precise time to where Vlad could not get that before his cooldown came back on that ability. So, great outplay there by the Gnar to deny the kill. And he's not even going to miss too much experience as the minions did just show back up to that top lane. And Trundle going to go pretty much all in there with that smite immediately, but unfortunately for him, the Wukong is here. Great use of that satchel charge that I was talking about earlier. The Wukong will, yes, be enough with the final strike. Not going to go down to the turret shot. Unfortunately there, Zig's ultimate is down, so that will be a safe return from the uh, Wukong there. Good play there, juggling the aggro just in time. Excuse me, not juggling. Leaving the aggro just in time of the turret uh, to make sure he does not end up going down. Uh, and that will be Kaelin pushing out this bottom lane. So another kill over to the red side, and we do see the kills starting to get a little bit into some dangerous territory here. In addition to that uh, dragon that did go over to the red side... Um, blue side, you're going to have to be careful here that they don't let this start to get out of control. If they do, um, that's going to be uh, the turret going down in the bottom lane. And the heal actually had to be popped there uh, from the vein to make sure Nami did not go down to that Kaelin. Good steal from the vein on that Krug, though. As we see some battling going in the top lane, uh, this bottom lane is going to be able to safely disengage. It looked like Trundle was not able to land that pillar. Um, so Red Side going to be able to walk away from that safely and mostly there to give Nami some time to start healing on back up uh, so she's not in that Caitlyn ultimate range at all. And Nar, uh, with that uh, MR built on both the Boots and the Spectral Cow, uh, going to be able to su uh, survive a little bit better. But Wukong uh, looking to fight here. Going to be a very close encounter there and actually going to end up going down is the Trundle to the Caitlyn and Nami going down as well. Wukong taking quite low in that back and forth between the junglers, but uh, just a little bit out of position there was the Trundle as the red side had control of this choke here, and he had nowhere to go. He was backed in there by the Wukong, so actually really good play there um, by Wukong uh, to force that fight uh, once it had started to continue that fight and take that red buff. Good steal right there. Um, throwing down the pink ward to make sure he has vision, and he really wants to go in on the Ziggs, but he He's going to think better of it knowing that he doesn't have his ultimate up. Um, and that that is a very strong and healthy tur turret there. So he's going to uh, hang around here trying to wait for uh, Ari to get some sort of uh, CC onto the Ziggs. But Ziggs playing a lot more carefully now. Um, but the story of this game, uh, despite the kills, looks to be right now this vision control. Even as this pink ward is cleared out, we do see just incredible vision control along the line of scrimmage on the weaker side which is the top lane for this red side um, that has been getting a little bit more bullied uh, but they do have they have been pressing those wards quite deep into that blue jungle for this point in the game so uh, blue side of course uh, having to ward uh, reactively to that warding their own jungle not able to uh, contest this line of scrimmage area in the river here which is going to start to cost them if they can't recover some more control of that um, when this next dragon comes up here in just under two minutes and we do see Ari making that roam up to the top lane Vlad pretty far out he's going to have to pull this charm but when will he pull the trigger no he does miss it and with the ignite ticking 
That's probably not going to be enough. Actually, Wisely decides not to go in the pool because that will drain his health, and that might have put him in lethal range from the Ignite there. Uh, so good uh, restraint from the Vlad to not dive into that pool uh, once he knew he had been hit by the charm. Trundle actually going to see this Wukong here, who's going to be able to steal that. going to actually just focus on getting the kill onto this Trundle here, who does actually sort of block himself with that pillar, unfortunately, there. Gonna, gonna try and get the Wukong to take as much turret damage as possible. And it does appear to be worth it as Vlad was able to finish that off with the ultimate um, going off from that damage that he was able to ramp. But meanwhile, in the bottom lane, we're gonna actually jump back to see what's going on in this bottom lane here. It looks like there was an engagement breaking out just 2v2 into this bottom lane. Um, was there some sort of strong engagement? No, it was just a solid back and forth and Nami was just taken too low with the damage from that uh, Caitlyn. She does have enough attack speed right now. Oh, and that ultimate will not be enough. The shield uh, charging up onto that vein might have been enough as she was under 100 hit points before that pot was popped on her. So very uh, strong play here from this red side uh, to take this inner turret here. And that will be the inner turret going down. Um, so some global gold coming in, 0 and 3 in turrets control. So this red side actually really uh, strong play uh, in making it so they can actually turn uh, this early gold lead and kill advantage into some kills here. Uh, Ari looking to roam up again, um, but Vlad playing a little bit safer, knowing that that uh, Meganar was coming out, gonna be playing a bit safer. But he does now have uh, the CDR from the blue buff and that red buff burn, so gonna be. A uh, very scary Vladimir. Uh, as Wukong here spotted out in the jungle. Not going to be able to defend this turret. Uh, is the Vlad even with this Trundle coming in? No, they are going to look for this fight. They do know Wukong is waiting in the wings. So Trundle probably needs to back up here. He's going to go a little far. Going to actually have to burn the flash. And Vlad going to be able to make it out with the pool. But very risky play there, knowing that they were outnumbered 2v3, possibly overestimating how long it was going to take Wukong to wrap around uh, through that river there. And it looks like Vlad probably is actually going to have to back off here uh, and just surrender this turret as Meganar is coming out. Yes, that will be the turret going down. So now absolute total domination here from this red side with that objective control. Four turrets now, all the outer turrets gone for, from this blue team. Um, trying to create some uh, pressure to answer in this mid lane here, but that turret has not taken almost any damage yet. So even with a vein right there, oh vein getting the aggro too from the knockback, um, gonna be forced away here, not able to do anything. And it looks like this dragon is up, and all that vision uh, is favoring the red side. Absolutely, completely dark. They are gonna see the Wukong uh, go in that general direction, so they're probably gonna know this has been started. They're, Hoping that they're going to get a little greedy and try and look for a pick of their own. But they're not. They're just going to go ahead and take this dragon. Uh, but actually, pretty safe uh, play there from the blue side. Did not blindly go in there. They knew they didn't have their jungler with them. So they didn't want to contest anything. But Wukong going to be diving in with his ultimate. Hitting on multiple people. Actually looks like uh, they might have been able uh, to get a kill on him if they had turned their aggression back. But going to retreat here knowing that... Uh, the cavalry was coming in for this red side, and Vlad going to think better than to go into that unwarded part of the jungle there. Um, so no kills going over, uh, aside from that Nami, to this red side here. Um, but that will be another dragon going down for the red side. So Vayne actually going to be caught out by this Wukong. He does not have the ultimate, but that will be enough with the Spirit Rush. Will it? Yes! The second, uh, the return true damage on the Q is going to be just enough to make sure... Uh, that she does go down good uh, choke pillar there or pillar there in the choke from Trundle but Trundle actually taking quite low that Caitlyn damage with that early infinity edge uh, completed has insane amounts of damage Vlad Charmed there gonna take both procs of the Q unfortunate for him but he's gonna spell vamp right back up with this hex tech completed and the needless uh, to just ramp up that damage so he can heal even harder off of that and it's looking like he's almost uh, got his DFG completed. Oh, but Caitlyn, the Braum Q actually going to be what picks up the kill there. Uh, onto the Ziggs. Ziggs getting a little bit out of position. Just, I mean, trying to reclaim their jungle on this red side. 
um, of their own jungle for the blue team. But that, look at the ward coverage. Again, I, I keep toggling to this, but this is the red team's vision. This is not all vision. This is only the red side's vision. And that entire uh, bottom side of blue's jungle is just lit up like a light bright. They have decided not even to completely neglect as there is some ward coverage here uh, in the more top side of the jungle of Blue's jungle, but Red sparing no expense, um, knowing they have a lead here, knowing they can afford to just uh, blow a little extra money on wards and still a couple pink wards in their inventories ready to be laid down um, for any uh, further objectives or uh, to try and set up some more point control in uh, the Blue side's jungle here and press that advantage they have, which they have been doing absolutely well. The gold lead now over uh, 10,000 gold in favor of the red side here so blue's gonna have to really uh, try and turtle hard here and they do have the potential uh, with the zigs the perhaps one of the most infamous wave clearers in the game um, to try and just uh, turtle up around what turrets they do have left and uh, deny any further encroaching onto their uh, turf but it looks like with all these members down here Probably Vayne just needing to fight this. Oh, Vlad actually going to be caught on a trap there. So that will be the Nami going down. Her ultimate only going to hit one person. That will be the Vlad going down as soon as he comes out of his pool because of that stun. Brom OP. <laughs> um, Lukong going to be able to get the kill onto that Ziggs. Yes, actually condemned out of the ultimate. Uh, so not even any damage being laid down on the Wukong. Not that it would have mattered with how strong Wukong is at this point and how much health he has. Uh, he did go for the Juggernaut enchantment there uh, onto his uh, item. Bro, I'm going to try and disrupt the minion line a little bit here uh, to allow those minions to push in mid um, as they're going to try and take this objective here as quickly as possible before the blue team gets up. Uh, which will be possible. That is a pretty solid wave here coming in even with uh, Braum accidentally tanking a couple of those shots there, but that will be enough to take this turret, and that will be um, only one inner turret still remaining for the blue side here. They, I mean, as hard as this is to say, uh, especially with that dragon coming up in a minute and a half, a little bit over a minute and a half here, uh, they're going to need to try and contest that dragon, but just at this point, I don't think it's really possible. I mean... The wards have largely expired for the red side, so they can no longer make use of that uh, control uh, of the absolute domination of the vision war. But, I mean, the blue side does not know that. Um, what they know is that the last time they've been going in their jungle, they've been getting destroyed. Um, so, they, they're going to have to continue to play really cautiously, uh, even though this is the only time they have to sort of reestablish that control as they warp their own general. We just saw Vlad throw down a ward over here. Super defensive ward. But probably the right thing to do at this point as they're pinging this turret here to try and defend against this Nar, um, who actually does not have any attack speed built. This is a full tank Nar aside from that single longsword. Um, and he will be caught out. Great pillar there, but uh, with the Braum passive onto him, uh, that's going to be a trade that actually goes in favor of this Nar here. So they're Wailing away, trying to clear out these minions as quickly as possible to get some damage onto that turret from this Caitlyn, but uh, Vlad gonna be enough with this Trundle to force them away here. Trundle gotta be careful to not let that last tick be propped on him, both of uh, just Nars' uh, passive ability and the uh, ability, the stun from the Braum here. And that, oh my apologies here, quick jump back, we don't want to miss that start of the engagement, that very critical engagement here. I was trying to watch this corridor, but I missed the Ari who just has this insane mobility to jump in. That will be the Spirit Rush. She did decide just to pick up the Nami as the Wukong was coming in. So actually baiting in a little bit uh, of that vein. Wukong going to get her just before he goes down. Uh, very close there. Unfortunate for the blue team that that did happen. And Trundle going down like he's a squishy champion. And that will be the Ziggs going down as well. So overall, a four for one. Um, this red side, or this red team just destroying, and this will be the crack of the base with this turret going down. That's probably gonna be the inhibitor as well, actually. So at this point, with your base cracked, I, I just don't even know what the blue side can do. They're just gonna have to try and hold off and really 
get some favorable picks, I suppose, with that Nami. Um, but the red side has been, uh, the red team has been very studious about moving together as a unit and uh, not getting over uh, extending into the jungle when they don't have vision there to know it's clear. Um, and they're going to be uh, perfectly timed falling back to this dragon that is up now. And able to take that, that will be their third dragon of the game. So they will get that extra movement speed as you see on the screen here. Um, and blue side kind of try and rush over to the dragon to uh, do what they can, but thinking better of it actually just going to seed that dragon again. I mean, what can you do at this point? You really kind of have to seed that dragon, even though, um, you know, if the dragons continue to get out of control, uh, this game that's already spiraled out of control officially uh, is just going to get even worse. But there's not much you can do at this point aside from trying to turtle up in that base and wait it out. But now with the base cracked, I mean, there's got to be some sort of insane play here possibly if the red side gets a little greedy and tries to go for a baron and doesn't quite position well enough to allow that to happen um trundle actually gonna smite that for the vision um no he doesn't smite that for the vision uh probably actually would have been the best use of his smite there uh just to try and get some vision control in their uh jungle again by smiting that wolf camp um but that will be the red side uh going over to this baron area um, they're going to try and sweep out as much vision as possible along the way and establish vision of their own so they don't give up anything at this Baron attempt. And they are going to know that uh, this entire area, aside from the pit itself, is unwarded. But with the control that they've had, they're probably going to know that they didn't make it all the way up to the actual pit to ward. So this will be a free Baron whenever they decide actually going to throw down the pink ward too onto the pit. So they will know that this is a uh, absolute darkness for the blue team um, as this Baron is going down that will be the Baron and now with the Baron buff as well onto the red team this is probably gonna uh, signal the start of a final push here um, not too much gold to spend a little bit of gold on that Wukong but they might just run straight into a lane here and shove out a lane possibly that top lane it looks like it's gonna be a few of them going to the top some indecision here is actually uh, might be a chance for the blue side to get some sort of advantage if they can get a pick, but with all the vision in that dry, or that uh, jungle, you know, there's not even really opportunity for this blue side if they knew what was going on to uh, land a pick there because red would just be able to avoid it at this point. So we're going to see in the top side this Nar Brom combo with the variant up minions. It's going to be enough to take down that turret. Uh, without any answer as the blue team tries to re-coordinate back into this but they are going to be going down that will be Brom uh, let's go back here Brom getting that turret but I do want to see the start of this engagement because this is probably going to be the final engagement here yeah just Nami just blown up by that Wukong just gap closing in not even needing to use the ultimate and Zig stepping a little bit too far forward trying to do what he can to clear out these minions but is going to die and that will be Trundle actually no not getting uh the wukong but in the meanwhile in the back uh vladimir was able to hop in uh, and get the kill onto that caitlin uh trundle trying to do what he can to defend this turret and taking quite a bit of damage from the turret um but not going to be able to survive it and that is the ace the last little bit of damage coming in from the minions onto vayne and that looks to be it with only the Nami and the Zig spawning here momentarily. Good bubble to try and slow them down, but with the minions streaming in from the top lane and through this mid lane here with the super minions, that's probably going to be it. Um, Vlad is respawning here, but yeah, that will be Nami just throwing out the ultimate to try and stop people, what, do what she can there, but gonna just go down to the Ari just throwing Qs out. Absolutely destroying this Nami, who is just such a squishy champion, even with that MR built. Uh, Ari able to put out so much damage at this point. They are having trouble even defending this turret. They are going to be able to save one Nexus turret, uh, but with two inhibitors down and this absolute vision control of the entire map, uh, Red Team does look to just go back one more time, spend this gold. That has accumulated quite a bit. Uh, and then make one final push probably for the kill uh, into this blue team's uh, base. You see Vayne uh, trying to not get assassinated by that Ari uh, pick 
gonna or even the Wukong combo uh, with his ultimate following up his gap close uh, opting to go for the early Banshee's Veil before she even completed one uh, offensive item being that uh, Blade of the Ruin King here as we see with the two daggers and the cutlass um, I mean again at this point there's not really much you can do you do need Vayne to put out that damage if there's a way to come back it would be through Vayne being ignored during a team fight and just able to wail away and proc that true damage as much as possible during the team fight. But it doesn't look like this red team has been ignoring the vein, you know. So, I mean, while it's it seems to be the correct play to build that Banshee's Veil, I mean, at this point, there is no correct play. You just gotta hope that there is a severe misplay from the red side if you're the blue team. Uh, and try and go all in, uh, go that YOLO damage with the vein, I suppose. Um, but you know with the Ziggs here they do have that really strong wave clear uh, Vayne stepping really far forward here she's got to be careful even with that Banshee's Veil for the extra security um, and it looks like Wukong uh, with that uh, uh, built up excuse me I can't recall the name of the elixir but Wukong just laying down the damage from his ultimate going to be able uh, to take down the vein and will be going down himself yes no yes he will be going down uh, but overall that will be <laughs> the Zonius great great Zonius timing there oh great timing from the Braum too um, coming out of Zonius but that will be the ace just for the Wukong and that looks to be the game going over to the red side as Kaelin wails away on this turret and then on this Nexus um, that will be the game going over to the red side so GG congratulations to uh, Amazon Team Penta Hugs uh, picking up the victory here in this game closing out pretty quickly as well so uh, clinic put on by this red team gonna be uh, establishing their dominance showing that they are a really strong threat uh, going into the future here uh, the story of this game I mean of course was just that everything spiraled out of control for them uh, we even see Wukong aside from getting the juggernaut uh, uh, enchantment here for his jungle item he uh, went full damage like as much as black cleaver is full damage uh, but he did go really heavy on that damage so not even really making too much use out of the uh, juggernaut enchantment here aside from the just flat survivability it offers you but was still able to go 10 3 and 10 um, more so even than the 10 kills onto him the 10 assists uh, able to create so much opportunity for his team and the Ari of course never giving up any shutdown gold going 9-0 and 7 um, absolutely insane plays here and as we see uh, Vladimir uh, able to get out uh, 11 and a half thousand damage to champions here um, not even with, as the most damage on his team not even able to compare with anyone aside from the support uh, for the red team so this just an absolute game. One of those games where it just spirals out of the control. Not really much you can do there aside from try and wait out the inevitable. Do what you can. But this red team very uh, studiously closed out the game without giving the blue team that chance to come back. So that will be the game going over to Amazon Pentogs. Uh, if you uh, want to stay up with any future games, uh, go to the After Hours Gaming League's website. They will have the schedule posted there. The videos will be uploaded there. And also you can always subscribe to my YouTube account to uh, see all the games uh, that we will cast going forward that I will cast at least going forward uh, will be uploaded to there as soon as they are cast so uh, thank you for tuning in and I will see you all next time